we have the, the two main uh, careers that we really see in biology. We see people that are looking uh, mostly uh, to go into either the health fields, pre-meds, pre-dental, pre-optometry, pre-pharmacy, something like that. Or we see people trying to become uh, scientists uh, like me, sort of, I'm a scientist, but you know, I teach all the pre-health people. Um, so the, the, about, I would say about half and half each way um, in, in either. The, so that, that's the sort of the first decision that you need to make is what are you going to do once you graduate? Are you going to try and get into you know, some other professional school or are you going to try and go get a job as a scientist or something like that? And you have to sort of make that decision maybe, well, certainly four years from now. Um, usually about two or three years from now, you sort of are deciding which way you're going to go. Because if you're going the pre-health way, you start to prepare for your MCATs or your uh, DAT or your, you know, your OAT or something like that. Um, and you're going to go down that track. And if you're going to be a scientist, you start to think about either, you know, preparing yourself for a job in you know, corporate uh, or, you know, government or something like that. Or you start to think about going to grad school. Um, going to grad school, you start to think about perhaps... Um, our co-terminal program where you can, uh, while you're still, in, still here as an undergrad, you transition to getting a, a master's degree and sort of get a flavor of grad school to see if it's like you. It's something you like and you're motivated to and you do well in. And, you know, potentially going on getting a PhD or something like that, uh, either at IIT or elsewhere. Um, so that's it. I don't know, what do you guys, you guys have any questions? I see uh, you guys are all uh, Zoomed out now. Nobody's uh, saying anything. Nobody's turn their camera on, nothing. What do you got? You guys have any questions? Feel free to unmute or type them in the chat too. No. Chat, I don't see this chat. I don't see anybody in the chat. I can run through the, the curriculum uh, a little bit with you. The, the curriculum is really at IIT, sort of your major curriculum. And in biology, we have four majors, we have biology, biochemistry, we have biophysics, which is really something called MBB. That's really a very more scientific. MBB is molecular biochemistry and biophysics. And you can think of those as, you know, biology plus uh, more chemistry, biochemistry, and MBB is biology plus more chemistry plus more physics, sort of almost all the, all the hard sciences kind of in, in that one degree. And then there's bioinformatics. Bioinformatics is uh, more uh, computer science and mathematics. Okay, so you can really think of it as the added added degrees. Okay, and that's really a good degree for you know the, the genomics, things like that, genetic uh, diseases, things like that. Oh, I see a question in the chat. Who's the question? What kind of iPro courses do we? Um, you can do whatever you want in terms of a, a, an iPro. Okay, so what kind do they do? It depends. Some people want to do something biological. Some people want to get out. I have one, um, one advisee right now is in some, it's like energy efficiency. She's in with some electrical engineers and they're trying to design electrically efficient buildings. Okay, um, there's a lot of health uh, related uh, iPros. There's some engineering related iPros, coding iPros. IPROs are really a way to um, really get some practical experience on, on, on some kind of project. I'm, I'm running one IPRO with a, a fellow in uh, biomedical engineering, uh, Abhinav Bhushan. Um, I know because some biology students sort of check out the BME um, things too. So I don't know if Abhinav is involved in that over there. I don't think he is. He is? Oh, wow. Um, anyway, so we're running an iPro having to do with something called the uh, uh, iGEM competition, which is a sort of a student competition held every year at MIT. It's well, it started at MIT and it's still located in Boston, although we didn't go last year because uh, well, nobody went anywhere last year. It happens in November. So uh, two years ago, we went uh, with a team and that's to develop a, um, uh, a bio a synthetic biology, a, an engineered biological solution to some problem. And the team we went to two years ago was um, having to do with the plastic waste problem. And if you guys heard about, um, you know, plastics are really great 
in that they're light and they're moldable and easy to manufacture, but they're really bad because they don't really degrade very well. And they end up in the environment and they last for a very long time. And they're a particular problem in the uh, aquatic environment because they kind of float and they don't settle. So right now in the, the oceans are full of all this plastic degree, debris and it's ending up getting ground up into small pieces and ends up in the food chain. So it's being consumed by little fish, get consumed by big fish, get consumed by all sorts of things. And it's, it's actually making its way back into land ecosystem, but it's a particular problem in the uh, oceans right now. There's this giant gyre, they call it the plastic gyre in the Pacific. It's full of our trash in the oceans. And so our team, uh, they were developing, and in the meantime, people had discovered a plastic degrading it enzyme. And so this team was trying to engineer this plastic degrading enzyme into an algae uh, to try and get it to colonize these bits in the ocean and degrade the plastic in the ocean. And so that's what they did that year. Um, so that's the kind of thing you do in an iPro, things like that. It's really, uh, they had for engineering, they've had like the solar powered race car, okay, which is not exactly Formula One or NASCAR, but it's really an energy efficiency thing. And some of the engineers, people do that. And for an iPro, you really should try and stretch your wings and, and meet, um, people in other majors, um, things like that. Anything else, any other questions? I can run you through the curriculum, as I said, but I'm not sure that uh, a list of courses is what people want to hear. Um, you don't, in, in for the majors in biology, you don't really have to make up your mind um, at all in first year. All the majors, all, all of the four majors I outlined, uh, you take basically the same thing in first year. You take uh, um, your general biology, one and two. You'll take gen chem, one and two. You'll take, uh, you know, calculus, one and two. Uh, you'll take one of your sort of general education requirements, um, which could be a humanities class, or it could be a social science class, like psychology or political science or something like that. And you'll take something called introduction to the professions, which is a, a first year seminar. And uh, it's really about ethics and professionalism, ethical issues in biology, okay? Um, like uh, Dr. He, anybody here know who Dr. He is? Anybody's heard of Dr. He? Dr. He, you know, very famous guy, got arrested. He's one of the few scientists that got arrested for doing what he did. No, anybody has any idea? How could you get arrested for being a scientist for doing something? And I wouldn't say it's negligent. He did some, well, some people think it's negligent. You know, Dr. He going once and twice. Dr. He is the guy who cloned, um, there's two cloned, two genetically, well, possibly three. It's a little unclear whether there are three. There are at least two genetically engineered human beings on the planet right now, okay? These two Chinese girls were born, I think, two years ago, 20, 2019 now. They were um, engineer. He used CRISPR technology to engineer, he said, resistance to HIV, okay? Um, changed some, some of their genetics to make them not be able to get HIV. Sounds like a good thing. I don't know if I didn't have to worry about getting HIV, I would think it's good. But, you know, there, there are some people who think it's a bad thing, right? Why? Why would that be a bad thing, genetic engineering? Maybe we should genetically engineer everybody. Right, should we genetically engineer people? What do you think? Nobody thinks anything about genetically engineering people. What if we could all be, uh, you know, seven foot two, play in the NBA, it'd be awesome. Could help the Bulls out a little bit. Bulls need some help lately. What if we could all do that? Would that be a good thing or what? So that that's the type of issues that we deal with in ITP. There's a lot of, um, this year there were a lot of professional and ethical issues having to do with um, um, the vaccine and the pandemic, right? And especially equity and vaccine distribution. Was the vaccine different for people, different people or not? Um, why is it that um, minorities have been hesitant? Anybody know why, why? Why have minorities been predominantly hesitant? Is that they have a high degree of hesitancy with the, with the vaccine, right? So why, right? There's been a number of things that scientists have done in the past that have really led to that. There were things like the Tuskegee experiments on syphilis here in this country in the 30s and 40s that people were, um, you know, 
not treated too well by scientists because scientists um, didn't think about professional behavior um, in the same way as they do now. At least we hope they don't. And uh, that, those are the issues that we deal with in ITP. It's, it's professionalism and, and ethics in the science. And then you have the, you know, the hardcore science classes and uh, uh, biology, general biology uh, one and two, uh, chemistry. And you'll have seven, what are called general education requirements. Those are humanities and social science classes, uh, two IPROs. And in all of our programs, you have four to six electives, depending on which program it is. Um, um, technical electives, which could be, you know, in biology, a technical elective is any biology class. And in, uh, you know, biochemistry, it's any biology or chemistry elective. And in the bioinformatics, your technical electives are, are, are bio, some biology classes and some computer science classes, things like that. So anything else? You guys got any questions? You're all sitting there. I know this could be like your. I see a question that it says: Is it easy to get uh -huh. biology research opportunities as a freshman? Is it easy to get research opportunities as a freshman? Um, I'd say it's easy. It's not necessarily uh, the best idea. You know, as a freshman. You know, there's a transition as a freshman. Um, so we get some people, you don't want to really get in over your head as a freshman. Um, I think maybe 1B, your 1B semester, your spring semester, you might consider um, poking around the lab and seeing if you, if you, uh, um, you like it and you can do something. You know, doing research is, is a commitment, right? You can't just show up for like, you know, an hour or a week or something. You got to put in, you know, every couple days or something like that. You got to become good at it. And you got to get in there and really achieve something. And I always get my advisees, you know, your, your goal for the first semester is really to get good grades, of course, and to really begin to fit in and be successful. If you can get through your first semester and develop your social circle with your friends, right, you're going to have some friends from high school still, people with different places, you're going to have your old high school friends. But you really got to get here and you got to get engaged with people in your major and in your dorms if you're in dorms or just in, in in your classes and make sure you're doing okay and then after that then I say you know okay then then look at what you're going to do think about what you're going to do the next summer and that might involve getting involved in research might involve getting involved in a job um, getting something like that um, it is pretty easy at IIT to get into a lab I just think when people want to jump in right away that's not always the best idea right um, How much of our college experience should be biology centric to be? Um, it, it depends on what you want to do. You know, it, it's, it's what do you want to do with your life? That's why the first question I asked everybody is what do you want to do with your life? Right? Do you want to be, a, and the, the things that we see in biology, the first question is do you want to be, are you in the health field or are you in a, a scientist? Right? If you're going to be a scientist, then getting into a lab and doing research is really a good idea you know, starting you one B really that next summer, um, you can apply to various programs to do summer research in particular. As a scientist, you really should spread out and go other places. The, the uh, A big program is called the uh, NSF REU program, Research Experience for Undergrads. We run a couple of them here at our school, but it's really good in the summers to go somewhere else, right? And we take people from elsewhere here and it's run. Um, if you're looking to be in the health professions, then you have to really start developing your professional portfolio, which involves, you know, shadowing and hospital volunteering and, um, you know, dental or optometry or pharmacy or anything like that. Um, you, there's sort of many, you just have to do something. You get involved with student government, get involved with um, um, social activism, get involved in something. That's what you have to do. We had one of our majors um, Oscar, Oscar um, um, Martinez, he went, um, he got this internship in Congress um, about, well, about three or four years ago now. And he ended up, he was, thought it was just a summer internship and they loved him. And he ended up staying for a year and a half. And he had to like, he had to take a leave of absence from his degree because he then he worked in this uh, congressional, for some congressman for a year and a half. And then he came back 
uh, and, and then we had to figure out how to patch up his degree and get him graduated, but it was a great experience for him. You know? So you can get involved in that would be sort of science policy and be your future. So, you know, he's running things like that now. What else you guys got? Anything? Nothing. Nothing. How many people, how many people here, maybe I can get people to show their hands or something. How many people here are interested in uh, health professions in some fashion? Can I get a show of hands maybe? Nothing. There's Rishab. Rishab says maybe health professions. And Jose, all right. So two people and the rest of you guys are three people. Oh, we're getting more people, three people. Oh, that's uh, all right. So I had three people on there. That, that would, that would uh, sort of agree with what I would normally see in our class. We would see, sort of see half and half scientists and, and health professions people. And the rest of you guys are interested in being scientists of some sort. I like the scientists better. I can't say that because they're all my students. I love them all equally, but I'm a scientist, right? So, you know, I, I didn't decide to go to med school. I want to do this. Well, you guys, uh, okay, so you medical people, what are you interested in? Med school, dental, optometry, pharmacy, what? Or you don't know? Anything? My goal here is to coax someone to actually say something, turn on their camera and actually say one thing. How about, how about this? How, do you guys love Zoom for education? Can I get a show of hands? Who likes Zoom compared to like live classes and who likes live classes? No, nobody wants to show hands. Um, IIT is going to be, you know, in the fall, we're going to be all back live, um, I believe. Whether you'll have, I, I don't think you'll have any remote classes. There might be one, I don't know. It depends on your electives. There might be a few electives offered remote if you want them, but you're not going to be sort of forced into any classes. I think if you were to take one of those humanities classes, there'll be a panel of them and, and one or two of them might be offered as, as remote. The classes in general are all going to be sort of live in the fall. So you'll be back in the classroom um, in a normal fashion, you know, pandemic willing, we're hoping. What is the hardest class? Well, that depends on your abilities um, in first year or in, uh, in, uh, in overall. I get these first year, first year. Um, hardest class first year. Some people in biology, biology sort of has a bad reputation. I hate to say this because it's kind of, you know, um, biology sort of has a reputation of, you know, science for people who don't like math. Um, and so biology students, some of them tend to find calculus challenging. Okay. But that's not all. I have some students that are find math easy and, and go through it. So the, the calculus is one class to pay attention to, um, you know, but if you like it, that's good. Then, um, I don't know. It, it, it really, a hard class is really just what, what, the hardest class is the class that you're not motivated to study. That's what the hardest class is to see the relevance. Right. And so usually it's, you know, you're, you're, yeah, a lot of people think, Oh, I don't like calculus. I want to study biology. So I, what do I need this math for? But the fact of the matter is you got to sort of see the relevance of math. You know, biology is a science and you need to know, um, you need to know something about that overall in our program, I can tell you that for the med students, Orgo 2, and anybody who's a pre-med or something has probably seen this and, and all those, uh, you know, all the information out there. Orgo 2 is really kind of a, a, a big differentiator. That's the one class that if someone has like 1B, I can bet it's in Orgo 2, right? So we see that sometimes. That's the one thing. Other than that, you know, for your, um, you're going to have to take, when you when you're to come here, you would take a math placement test and uh, an English placement test, which is going to place you into the, the right level of classes. So if you, if you sign on here, unless you have, you know, if you have AP for math, then that's fine. Or an AP of a certain score will place you out of that. Other than that, there's a math placement test and that'll put you in the right level of, of math. And there'll be a writing placement test, which will put you, you know, approve you into the right sort of humanities level classes. So that's about it. How useful, how useful are things we learned from high school, college level classes? Well, I hope they're useful. I don't happen to know your high school teachers, but I'm hoping they're competent teachers. Um, 
I would say that um, what's most useful in terms of AP, and many of our students come in with AP, and the most useful AP is probably um, AP not in your major. AP in your major um, is kind of challenging to accept it. A lot of people don't accept AP in their major because if you take AP in your major, then you're immediately placed into a, a more challenging class, a second or a third year class, and, and that can be difficult. Um, I'll go my daughter. Okay, so my daughter, what was, what's, what was, I'm going to ask you guys a question then. How many people, what, what was your, what's your hardest class in high school right now? Senior year of high school, what is your hardest class? I have my, I have two daughters that finished about five years ago. So they argue about the two hardest classes they took. And they rank them one and two, but they have opposite opinions. So I'm interested in your opinion. What's your hardest class right now? At your high school, the one class that people scream, ah! AP calculus, AP chemistry, no, you don't have it. Nobody, no, chemistry and calculus are yeah, those are gonna be challenging. Um, at, at the high school my daughters went to, the two class, and most of their friends agreed, it was either A push or it was uh, um, um, AP physics. So, and my, 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 my one daughter in particular, she, um, AP physics made her cry. I'd be up working on my classes or grading papers or something on the dining room table at night and she'd be in her room and then I hear her yell and scream and ah, I hate this and then she'd cry. And it was really, for her, it was a traumatic experience for her, I think, but she got through it. Yeah, AP physics was terrible. Yeah, a lot of people say that. But listen, so she did it and I said, well, okay, Mary, she did it. She got through, she got the score she needed and she went to um, University of Waterloo, which is a big sort of nerdy math school, okay? Um, and I said, okay, Mary, you're not accepting your AP. You're gonna retake physics in first year. And she said, what do you mean? I hated it, it was horrible, horrible, horrible. I said, no, because this is, you know, what do you wanna be in second semester physics? It's gonna be the same thing again. What you're gonna do is you're gonna retake that AP class, okay? You're just gonna take physics one. And, and then, of course, you've already taken AP physics. So it's, it's easy. And I remember talking to her on the phone sometimes. She's laughing, giddy. She's, ah, people are coming to, people are asking me for help on physics. And she break out laughing. They think I'm smart in physics. Ha, 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 ha. You know, and I said, that was the right decision, right? So sometimes um, um, taking your, um, retaking those classes that you, unless you really aced it, you're really comfortable. I always ask people, calculus, physics, chemistry, things like that, um, unless you're really comfortable retaking them, you know, it's not a bad thing to have kind of an easy A class in a class that everybody's like freaking out about. If you're skating through calculus, getting an A and everyone's like freaking out, that's a good thing for you, right? It's win-win. I think a lot of the AP, if you have AP in some of the classes that are non-major, you got AP economics or psych or something like that, that, that can be really useful because what it does is frees up room in your curriculum, right? It frees up extra space to either get into the electives you want later on or have a light semester there's one, you know, you got something happening, you're taking the MCAT or something like that. So AP can really help you in that regard um, to, to get going. But we want to have that, you know, you, I have the, we, the thing with IT is you're going to get, um, you're going to talk with to either me or to Katie Spank. She's the other undergrad advisor in biology here. And she's like the PMED. And uh, she's going to, we, we talk to everybody and, and get, you know, individual advising. Most interesting project research I've ever worked on. Well, I'm a very old guy, so I've worked on a lot of things. So I don't know. Most interesting project. I, I, you know, if you ask any scientists what the most interesting thing they're working on, it's probably going to be what they're working on right now. So, you know, I, I'm working on, um, I, I do muscular dystrophy research, which is, uh, um, uh, muscular dystrophy is the most, it's, it's one of the most common genetic diseases, and I'd say it's the most common fatal genetic disease. Okay, um, Duchenne kills one about one in five thousand uh, uh, boys have it because it's uh, it's X linked, right? So it's a sex sex determined thing. So one in five thousand boys have it, and they die. And you know what's the people worry about? There's a lot of things in terms of cancer and heart attack. The number you know number one, two, three killers in in Western society are stroke, heart attack, and cancer, okay? And so the median age of death for someone with cancer is what? What do you think? People die of cancer, it's big, kills a lot of people. What do you think the median age of death of someone who dies of cancer is? 
take a guess. Give me a number. Somebody's got to type a number. 53, 76, 70. So a lot of people die of cancer, but at 76, my grandmother died of cancer at 98. So she's listed as cancer death, but she was 98. Something was going to get her, God bless her soul. But, uh, you know, she, she missed by two years. And we, I, I came from Canada. So she would have been made it two more years. She would have got a birthday card from the queen. You're in the Commonwealth. If you turn 100, you get a birthday card from the queen. So she missed that. But, uh, in any event, uh, Duchesne kills median age of death with someone um, for Duchesne is 19 and a half years. And you spend the last 10 years of your life in a wheelchair, right? So you, you're basically um, with Duchesne, your muscles deteriorate about 10 times faster than they should. You have great turnover in your muscles. Uh, so when you're 10, you have the muscle tone of a 100 year old, which means you kind of end up in a wheelchair right around 10 to 12 years old. And when you're 20, you have the muscle tone of a 200 year old, which means you're dead. Uh, it's a very unfortunate disease. And, and the most unfortunate part about Duchesne is that um, you're perfectly normal when you're born. And a lot of parents don't even know it for two, three, four years. If, if, you, if you're not in contact with the health system, um, people don't notice it till about six or seven. You can start to see the decline at six or seven, just like me. You get old, you can't quite hit a baseball as far as you used to anymore. You think, oh, I'm getting old, I'm middle age, I'm no longer 22, right? So when they're that, they, they start to find that. Um, so you see, you have this baby boy or young child and, and he seems normal. And then all of a sudden around three or four, five, six, you get this notification, you're gonna be killed. You're gonna die, your kid's gonna die. And so it's a, it's, it's a, it's a devastating thing. But there are right now, it's really exciting. It's one of the first gene therapies. There's actually two approved gene therapies um, on the market right now. And there's, I think for Duchesne, there's four trials ongoing now. So we're really starting to get all this genetic technology out there for gonna make a difference. And I think there's people alive today that are not going to die because of the work that's happening. And it's really quite exciting. So that's what the most exciting thing that I think sometimes. When you go to conferences, you, some, they bring, they bring the, the patients come to these conferences and you actually see the people there, you know, and sometimes it's really heartbreaking. Um, but it's also so very rewarding to think that you're making a, making a difference. And so, you know, so yeah, so science in this thing. So it's not such a difference between medicine and science. Sometimes I think the scientists actually produce the cures and the doctors kind of implement the cures. So you need both things, right? So it's kind of, kind of cool. So I think that we have people in the department working on a lot of different things. Uh, we have cancer research uh, going on. We have some infectious diseases research, uh, a little bit of COVID research, but other, a lot of other infectious diseases, uh, foodborne illnesses. Uh, we have some, a lot more muscle research, uh, fundamental muscle research. I'm part of that. There's the people like Tom Irving using some of the national labs out at, there's a big national lab here. Um, just west of the city. Well, there's two national labs. One is Fermi Lab, which is mostly physics and material science. And then there's Argonne, um, just, just a little bit southwest. And that's um, Argonne is Argonne National Lab, which has the APS, the Advanced Photon Source. And there's a lot of structural biology that goes on there. And we have a couple of biology faculty members that run beam lines out there. And uh, so there's, there's a lot of opportunity. And that's really cool. You go out there. The, the, there's, they actually made a few movies where they used uh, they use argon as a big set because it's this it's a big building that's a mile around. It's a big circular building. It's a mile around because they have to accelerate the electrons in a circle. When you accelerate an electron, a radiating charge. Who took AP physics? When you move a charge, it radiates energy, right? So if you take electrons and you put them going around in a circle at a few tenths of the speed of light, they radiate photons and high energy photons are x-rays. And so that's what the advanced photon source is. And you could use these high energy photons for all sorts of uh, interesting uh, things, in particular protein crystallography and, and some other fiber diffraction and things like that. Because muscles are fundamentally fibrous, right? You've seen, you know, meat, this muscle is, has a direction in it, right? So if you take physiology, muscles work by fibers sliding against each other. It's actin and myosin and they grab and they crawl along each other. And there's hundreds and well, thousands and thousands of them pulling together. And so understanding those details helps you understand how muscles work, or in my case, how they break down and don't work anymore. So, all right, well, I blathered on in my research too much because, you know, 
That's, you, you can't get a scientist talking about the research or it'll go on forever. So, you know, um, what else? We have more questions. What are you guys interested in? Anything else? So I see a question that I'm not too sure we answered, but what does a typical classroom environment look like for a science major? Typical classroom environment? Well, it depends on your, like a typical classroom environment, like what class sizes or something. Um, you would have um, in your first year, probably 30 to 50, um, classes in the sciences for gen the calculus math the math department keeps it small i think there's no they keep all the math classes i think at 25 tops about 20 so lots of sections of these math classes but your physics and your chemistry and your biology they'll be like 30 to 50 depending on what it's sort of medium sized auditoriums and then as you get into up past that you'll get into you know smaller classes my biochemistry class has um i think around 15 people in it right so they're generally smaller classes um in here there will be a few very large classes but you know and usually those are broken up into two or three sections so so it all, all depends um i don't know what you know uh, what, what that we we've been all how's the biochemistry program well biochemistry is what i teach so i think it's super wonderful i love biochemistry i'm a biochemist i love biochemistry it's awesome see here's my exam i just gave an exam there you go steroids so um uh, biochemistry program. I think biochemistry is really, it's one of our more popular programs. Um, biochemistry is a really, it, it's a little bit better than chemistry for job prospects. I think it gives you a little extra credential. And it's also in terms of the health professions, a good degree because it kind of forces you to do a little bit more of the hard work that you need to do to do well in the MCAT. And so for that reason, I think it's a really good program um, for both sides of things and it's, it's, it's really so I don't know how how is it um, uh, I, I'm not sure what how how what what do you mean by how how is it um, you'll take biochemistry probably in your third year to get to actual biochemistry you have to take you know freshman chemistry and then you have to take organic everybody has to take organic Right. And then once you've done organic, because organic started out to be biochemistry, right? That's what organic means, right? Organic means you go to the grocery store, organic means healthy. You go to a chemical lab, organic means, oh, organic chemistry. It's very toxic, right? Safety, wear your safety glasses. So, but organic used to be biochemistry. And then once we started, um, you know, about a hundred years ago, that transition was made. And now organic sort of means toxic chemicals, but really it's, it's biochemistry. So I don't know. The biochemistry program, we have, you know, so two core classes and one core lab in biochemistry. And then you have to take physical biochemistry as well, which talks about, you know, the, the underlying uh, you know, physics behind how chemicals work. So anything else? What else we got? Nothing, nothing. You guys all, you guys, are you guys all uh, uh, senior? This is, are these, are these, these are all admitted students. So you guys are all seniors wrapping up right now. Just because like, sometimes we get juniors coming by when you're looking for, for, for colleges. Um, you know, so I, I know you guys are all uh, clearly admitted students trying to decide. Um, you know, the other thing about IIT is a, a, a smaller school compared to some schools, right? And you guys are probably checking out lots of different schools. And I can tell you, I went, I went to like a big state school, giant, 30,000 people, right? And sometimes we get people, you know, we get people transferring from U of I or something and they come here and say, oh my God, I felt like, you know, uh, uh, I felt like I was lost there or something like that. But you know, it's, 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 it's a little different, you know, it's a balance. You have to go, there's, it's not like there's the right school. There's the right school for you. And um, everybody's comfortable with the right, sort of environment. At a big school, you're going to have a million, million people and you're going to have a million, million classes. You can take a class in anything, but then maybe no one's going to know your name and nobody's, you know, my, my daughters, I, I mentioned my daughters because, you know, they're my daughters and I love them very much, but they went to Big Ten schools. One of them went to, to um, Madison and the other one went to Purdue. So Big Ten, giant machine schools. And, you know, they didn't really you know, I, I think in some ways they're fortunate. They had me in the profession because I could tell them, oh, you're going to go see your advisor. This is what you have to do. And your advisor tells you this, you know, don't do that or ask him this question or don't believe that. Right. 
Um, at IIT, you're going to get more, um, it's a smaller school, so it's more flexible. And like someone was asking, is it easy to get into a lab? Um, yeah, it is easy to get, it's much easier to get into a lab here um, than it is at a big school. You have to sort of fight your way in at a big school just because of the ratios. You know, when I said, I really don't encourage my students to try and get into a lab in the first year because it's not the right thing for in your one, one A semester, maybe one B and then second year, third year, go get in a lab. It's, it's pretty easy actually, if this is the right thing for you. So that's when you're making your decision, you really want to sort of think about what kind of school is going to fit what you, what you want to do, right? And, you know, it, it, we're more flexible here, more customizable. And you, you have really a lot of opportunities to get in there, but, you know, maybe there's not going to be 12,000 classes in, uh, you know, underwater basket weaving. So there you go. I know admissions people are saying, don't talk about that. No, we talk, we, we don't try to hide anything. I think you really, if you're not happy here, you're not going to stay here, right? You're not going to be happy. You, it's all about making sure that you guys, um, you got to be happy where you are because it is, you know, there's no hiding it. It's, it's an effort, right? IT's, you know, we're a relatively selective school and you have to be in something you're prepared to work for, right? But it, it you shouldn't feel like work. It should feel like work in a good way, like working out, playing a sport or something like that, right? You feel exhausted when you're done, but you know you feel you accomplished something, and so that's what that's what I would say. Anything else? I hope you guys aren't like this in your classes. What is the Kaplan Institute? The Kaplan Institute is uh, um, it's sort of home to our um, IPro programs a little bit. It, it's a little complicated because I I say that a little bit. Um, they're also home to entrepreneurship and they do a whole bunch of professional development type of activities, seminars, leadership institutes, things like that. They invite in speakers, they hold a uh, pitch. Sometimes there's uh, a business contests or things like that. They invite space. So they're really the looking to make relations with the corporate world and to help students that are developing um, startup businesses and things like that get connections. It's, it's really kind of a cool thing. You know, so that's what the KI is. Miriam Saleh, the new, uh, see, see, I see Miriam there. When I see Miriam in my Zoom call, I think it's Miriam Saleh, the director of the KI. But I don't know, is that you, Miriam? I can't see you. It's a different Miriam, I suppose. So, um, yeah, that's what the KI is. They run a lot of those type of events and you can, uh, you can meet people from various startups and uh, various things like that sometimes if you get involved in these things. Yeah, so um, as I said, if you guys got any other questions, um, you know, let me know. And I hope to see all of you, some of you, most of you um, in the summertime sometime. Okay.